Hello and welcome to Bounding Into Comics. My name is John Trent. I'm the founder and editor-in-chief at Bounding Into Comics. Today I got a story about Noah Hawley claiming that the upcoming Alien TV series is a story about inequality. Before we get to that story, I'd like to ask if you could please hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. If you are already subscribed, please make sure you are still subscribed. YouTube does like to unsubscribe people for whatever reason. And then hopefully by the end of this video, I'll have earned your like and that you'll give us a like that you will share this video with your friends and family, and that you will also hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our upcoming Bounding in the Comics videos. As I said, the creator of the upcoming Alien TV series from FX and Disney, Noah Hawley, recently provided some details about the show and how far he is in the development process. If you recall, the show was announced at the end of last year during Disney's Investor Day 2020 presentation. During that presentation, FX chief John Landgraf claimed the series would be the first Alien story set on Earth, despite Paul W.S. Anderson's Alien vs. Predator film taking taking place on Earth. Nevertheless, Disney tweeted out some bare-bones details at the time. They wrote, Alien is currently in development at, at FX Networks. The first TV series based on the classic film series is helmed by Fargo and Legion's Noah Hawley. Expect a scary thrill ride set not too far in the future here on Earth. Uh, their tweet concluded. Now... The show's creator, Noah Hawley, has provided some more details while speaking with Vanity Fair. First off, Hawley confirmed that the Alien series is indeed the next project he will undertake. He said, What's next for me, it looks like, is an Alien series for FX, taking on the franchise and those amazing films by Ridley Scott and James Cameron and David Fincher. Those are great monster movies, but they're not just monster movies. They're about humanity trapped between our primordial parasitic past and our artificial intelligence future and they're both trying to kill us. Here you have human beings, and they can't go forward, and they can't go back, so I find that really interesting. As for how far along in the process he is, he explained he's written a couple of scripts. He said, I've written a couple of scripts, the first two scripts, and we're looking to make them next spring. When you get to something with this level of visual effects, there's a lot of preparation that has to go into it. What's been really illuminating is to see that the entire film industry had to take a year off, and they are now trying to jam two years of production into one year, so it's very hard to look on the planet Earth and see where you might make something in the next six months. Everyone is racing to make up for lost time. So I figure let that bubble burst a little bit and we'll do it right. As for what the show is about, he made it very clear it is not about Ripley. He explained, it's not a Ripley story. She's one of the great characters of all time and I think the story has been told pretty perfectly and I don't want to mess with it. He then went on to provide a hint of what to expect from his show. He said, it's a story that's set on Earth also. The alien stories are always trapped, trapped in a prison, trapped in a spaceship. I thought it would be interesting to open it up a little bit so that the stakes of what happens if you, can, if you can't contain it are more immediate. He then went on to write a little bit more information saying that the story was about inequality. He explained, on some level, it's also a story about inequality. You know, one of the things that I love about the first movie is how 70s a movie it is and how, it, how it's really this blue collar space trucker world in which Yafit Koto and Harry Dean Stanton are basically waiting for Godot. They're like Samuel Beckett characters, ordered to go to a place by a faceless, nameless corporation. The second movie is such an 80s movie, but it's still about grunts. Paul Reiser is middle management at best, so it is the story of the people you send to do the dirty work. As to how this connects to his series, he reveals in mine, you're also going to see the people who are sending them, so you'll see what happens when the inequality we're struggling with now isn't resolved. If we as a society can't figure out how to prop each other up and spread the wealth, then what's going to happen to us? There's that great Sigourney Weaver line to Paul Reiser where she says, I don't know which species is worst. At least they don't F each other over, over for a percentage. And that's pretty much all the details that Holly disclosed. It definitely looks like he is going to be talking about uh, modern politics. He specifically says, well, we will see what happens when the inequality we're struggling with now isn't resolved. So we'll see how much uh, modern politics and this idea that he's running with inequality is in the show. I think that does make one a little bit leery about the show. Uh, however, we still don't know enough about it. We haven't gotten a trailer. I think there's a lot more uh, interesting things we can find out about it. I am interested in seeing the people who are sending, as he calls them, the grunts or the workers to these places and seeing how the aliens might be affecting them and maybe looking at, uh, I mean, it seems like it's, they're going to be opening up to society. So looking at how society might deal with this alien threat as a whole, rather than just kind of these 
uh, trapped spaces as we've previously seen. So I think that could be interesting. I could see a little bit of uh, an expanse type vibe to it where you do get some um, in-world politics and I think that could be interesting if, if I'm not reading too much into it, which I could be. But let me know what you think. My name is John Trent and you've been watching Bounding into Comics.